Some would say the perfect remake of Resident Evil 1 already exists. But what if that remake was done in the style of the more recent remakes like Resident Evil 2, 3, and 4? Resident Evil missed out on their 25th anniversary, but their 30th anniversary is on the docket in 2026. The rumor mill is spewing details and highly suggesting, also making total sense, that a return to the original Resident Evil for Capcom's big 30 year anniversary would be just that, the first game in the series. With that information established, let's piece together what a second remake could look like, if there will be any changes new or anything gets removed, and when we can expect to see this perfect remake to be brought back from the dead to its second form of terrifying perfection. It is a bit weird, because as I just mentioned, many Resident Evil fans love what that remake already brings to the table. Maybe minus the never-ending door cutscenes. Newer fans, maybe not as much due to the control scheme. With the success of the modern gameplay that Resident Evil now is, it's hard not to be intrigued by what that could look like. Let's start with the most basic of points. Is it third person like Resident Evil 2, 3, and 4 remakes? Trick question. The most obvious answer isn't quite so obvious. Resident Evil 7 and 8, and probably 9, will throw a huge wrench at just that. A fun fact before we continue, the original's director, Shinji Mikami, always wanted the original Resident Evil to be made in first person. To some extent, that's why Resident Evil 7 is the way that it is. There's a documentary I'll link in the description below for those interested on more of that. I do find horror to be more immersive and terrifying when it feels more like you, yourself, are in this environment. Also, VR adds to this as well. Whereas third person feels more like I'm watching someone else experience the horror. Both styles are still great, and have their purpose, but one is slightly more effective for horror. This is why I'm leaning towards both styles appearing in Resident Evil 1 Remake again. One caveat though, it could be that only one, probably third person, appears at launch, a la Resident Evil 4 Remake, then adds first person at a later date. That's entirely dependent on how long Capcom has been at work on this game and what resources they've allotted to it. But yes, having both at launch is most ideal for gamers. What was that? Would Capcom change the story, characters, and environment? How much change happened for Resident Evil 2 to Resident Evil 2's remake? Resident Evil 3 to Resident Evil 3's remake? Or even Resident Evil 4 to its remake? Based on those all having moderate to substantial changes, I would estimate there to be a level of departure. Why would you make the same exact game and release it again? Capcom isn't modding the first remake and just switching the gameplay. Also, there's the fact that a third person perspective doesn't do amazing if it's confined to microscopic sized hallways where a player can't move the camera around. Expect wider hallways with a few like Resident Evil 2 remakes for hallway variety. Part of the issue with doing that is now we have a different experience and does the degree of horror go down because of it? Wider hallways wouldn't be necessary for first person, but they are for third. The game being designed with both in mind makes sense unless Capcom only does one style, probably third. I think it's pretty safe to assume the story will, in the macro, stay the same, but in the micro, change enough to separate from the previous version. Having Wesker being a pinch more involved and misleading the player even more so could develop the early stages of his character a bit better than the barely anything previous Resident Evil 1s have accomplished. That's an area of improvement I can see Capcom making and also adding a handful more of cutscenes where the previous entries let you nearly entirely on your own. Do other side characters get more involved as well? Maybe. 
But the more help you add, the less horror you receive. See Resident Evil 5 and 6, where horror is near non-existent. Because it's not that horrifying when you aren't alone. Something this entry has well established, but could easily mess up if changed too much. I'd also expect boss battles to be more challenging than the yawn of a slug snake and easily squashed spider, black tiger. Does it make more sense to reduce the volume of puzzle solving and adhere to more combat and evasion of enemies? I would be shocked to see all the puzzles and key finding within the mansion to remain present in another remake of the game. It's too much of the same product if it's the same layout and design exactly. Yes, this newest remake will be less faithful to what precedes it, but I also don't think it's made for those that already believe the perfect version of a remake exists. Understand, this latest iteration may not be meant for you, but for those that love the current run of modern remakes with alterations. Temper your expectations, as even Resident Evil 2 and 4 remakes disappointed some gamers, just not the majority. Would anything else be affected? Lisa Trevor being added for the first remake was a nice addition. Expanding lore and content even more to make the game a bit longer does make perfect sense. There's a lot of woods around that mansion, an area largely untapped. Yes, the cast are there in the mansion to begin with because of the zombie dogs outside. But a brief venture into the woods in between the mansion and laboratory may be ideal. The remake, the first one, technically does this already, but it's so short-lived it's not really a point most gamers likely remember. What you really want to know is when you get it. 2026 is the 30th anniversary year for the Resident Evil franchise, and March is the original's release date window. Doesn't guarantee Capcom will hit this target date, but I'm guessing they are trying their damn hardest to do just that. Which, if they are behind schedule, that's why I can see only one in-game perspective of third person to be the de facto at release, if this is indeed the case. 2026 is still a ways off, but we should all be receiving Resident Evil 9 in 2025 next year to hold us over until then. What would you most like to see improved or changed for the second go around for a remake of the original Resident Evil? Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you next time on Hitobox.